Hello everybody and welcome to Electric City Sentai Denzi Caster, your weekly walk into the wonderful world of Tokusatsu right here on Geek Carolina. I'm your host Mike and this week I am joined by Joe Gibkin's homeboy Josh. Woot woot. Welcome, welcome back you guys. It's not good to be back internet? I look over and I'm like, well I said that last Friday Mike, so. <laughs> He's still in role playing mode, that's why he keeps going, I, well I looked over and said... Um, because you're going to be, you're doing that a lot in our L5R games, yeah. so. I, I like the grease stepped up, uh, naked guy reference, by the way. <laughs> it's good to be back in the Don't do cocaine. I used to be a lawyer. <laughs> That's Dave the Head. Um. He's never done cocaine, thank God. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. Just to take all my troubles and amp them up to 11. <laughs> So this week, folks, we are uh, we have found a different hell of a drug, and it's called '80s Toku. Um, uh-huh. So uh, Josh asked a question earlier, 1988. It's a lot better than '60s Toku. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, man. see last week's episode where we talked about some Johnny Sacco with Dave, mm-hmm. uh, or don't and like your life, whatever. <laughs> so today we are checking out uh, Chojo Sentai Live Man. Uh, we're on episode 17 and 18. Episode 17. The Crying Doll, The Attacking Doll, uh, is the name of that episode, where uh, Blue Dolphin is trying to uh, regain a doll with emotions, calls Toku, that it has uh, been transformed by Kemp, one of the uh, generals mm-hmm. of Volt, our big bad guy faction, into a doll-controlling brain beast. And then episode 18 is A Trap, Joe's Beloved Brain Beast. Uh, which uh, basically focuses on Joe, Yellow Lion, and Mazinda, another one of the generals of the uh, of Volt, uh, where Joe falls in love with a mysterious girl that has been created from all of the love and compassion that was left in Mazinda's heart, uh, and then turned into a brain beast all on its own. Uh, so if you want any deeper synopses than that, well... It's what the internet's for. So, <laughs> watch uh, the show. Watch the show. <laughs> Google that stuff. Uh, but we're going to talk about these episodes. So, first impressions, because I know you guys don't get to watch a lot of live, mm-hmm. man. Even like here on Denzi. Yeah, I think this is my third time getting to see some of it. Right. And this is about my fourth episode seeing it. But this first episode in particular, um, basically, nightmare fuel. <laughs> like, straight up, just the legion of. Evil, there we got gas dolls, we got shank dolls. Oh, that shank just pet, pet. Little, little pet bunny that just there's a needle. <laughs> One of the dolls literally a shank appears, it's a needle, but a shank appears from its paw and it stabs its little girl owner in the throat Sleeping. in her sleep. Not to mention that when the, the killer dolls are like tracking, uh. The lot like Team Live Man, they're making this creepy little. <laughs> you thought it was bad enough when like the monster showed up and he had like elements of the doll still very visible on him. You thought that was bad, and then, yeah, his name's Clown Brain. <laughs> and no sooner does that happen than dolls start shanking people, um, and mannequins come to life and start. The exact words he uses: "I'm going to put the heart of a devil in that mannequin." <laughs> yeah, it's like. Bleh. Uh, any first impressions for you out of this pair of episodes? Oh, I enjoyed it. Okay. I enjoyed both of them. Uh, I like Live Man from what I've seen of it. Uh, I did get to see the beginnings of it, and I've seen a few things here and there through the year when I got to visit. Um, but I do like Live Man. I like how these two episodes kind of brought the humanity to the bad guys mm-hmm. to remind mm-hmm. that there's a yeah. little bit more to it, even though in the first one, the bad guy has no humanity, but the monster does. Right. Uh, so we will start with you, Dave. What, what's the, some of the stuff you like about these couple episodes you've watched? We, we get the humanity. Right, there, right. right. I, I mean, I like that this was this was not cookie cutter, beat up the bad guys and then mm-hmm. blow them up with the super cannon. It was, wait a minute, there's repercussions to these actions. This is, this is something good that's been uh, tormented and changed. And then in the second episode, it's like... This was your good. Don't destroy it yet. You know, there's more. Mm. Just let us go away. We'll live our life in peace. I like that. It was hilarious. Anything for you, Josh? What, what do you like out of these couple episodes? Um, I actually, I mean, I like I said, I very much like the uh, the that they used a different tactic to try to beat the monsters. Mm. Um, other than, of course, the the inevitable uh, 
bazooka giant monster, let's fight. But until right. then, but um, one of the things I really liked was uh, how you there are definitely like layers to the bad guys. Like mm-hmm. there's a part because they like after Mazinda, um, basically she literally kills what's good in her. Yes, <laughs> and at the end, then you see Ashura basically like take this pendant that Ray, the good part of her, wore, and he looks like he's about to crush it, and then he tosses it to her. Yeah, but, but she cried. She cried during part of it, having to destroy that part. Oh no! And like she was like, <laughs> that's it. And then she started crying like immediately after she did. It, it is one of the strong suits of Live Man as a Super Sentai show, and it's one of my favorite Super Sentai. Uh, which is one of the reasons I was ecstatic when you guys picked it to be the next Super Sentai we watch. Um, that it's not, it's not formulaic. It's not cookie cutter. It is. Uh, there are layers all the way around. I love the fact that there is a uh, general for each member of the Live Man team. In essence, there are three generals. There are three members of the Live Man team. Uh, when the show starts. If you've seen publicity photos with five live men in it, well, that comes later. Um, <gasps> spoilers for a show that's 30 years old. Well, no, I just, uh, I'm like, sweet. Oh, something to look forward sweet. to. Sweet. Yes. Rangers. Yes. This show actually, uh, I think, has the latest debut of Extra Rangers in any Super Sentai show. Because I think it's like in the 30s. I like the robot. Really. I still like the robot. The giant mecha or their mm-hmm. robot sidekick? Their robot sidekick. Yeah, colon. Yeah, uh, yeah colon or cologne. They're both right. Um, the um, but I love I love the dynamic that the villains have. And the villains are probably actually, while I love the the actual ranger team, I love the live man themselves. Uh, I'm always drawn more toward the villains because they mm-hmm. really have they really are the story that drives the show, which is kind of unusual for a superhero show, in my opinion. Well, I mean, so. they are adapting and changing and growing more mm-hmm. than the the heroes are at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything that you didn't care for out of this, Josh? <laughs> well, not, not because I didn't, but basically just um, that I am probably going to be working through some weird crap in my dreams because of this episode. It's like, now I can't eat apples at Halloween, and I have to look out for needles in my teddy bear <laughs> but, brain. I mean, honestly, no, as far as criticism, none really. I mean, I, I enjoyed both these episodes. Uh, so like I said... Personal oogie-ness, but other than that, no, no, I mean... Uh, yeah, I didn't really care too much of the domestic violence in the second one with her like, Cow, I didn't tell you to be happy. Lead him into a trap. I was like, whoa, dude, calm down. We're just going for ice cream. <laughs> Anything else besides the... the, the, the <laughs> personal aside from, personal uh, misgivings. Aside from Mazenda's backhand, you know, her pimp hand. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think these were pretty solid. I, I, I remember some of the little moments kind of aggravating me, but... I still think it was probably leftover residue from Sako. <laughs> you have Johnny Sako PTSD. I do. <laughs> That's it, you know. it is it is strong with Dave right now. But um, the the shows are 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 funny. I mean, they're dated, so there is that. I mean. Maybe maybe that's why people are so defensive of Sako because they were kids in the '60s when they watched it the first time. This yeah, is I'm my sure. show. I mean, eighty what? Right. Eighty eight. Exactly eighty eight. I was eleven. Yeah. This would have been my jam. Oh, yeah. But one of the minor things I liked is I liked that the, the cafe that the, the live man team made at at was called Captain Hat. <laughs> yes. Gratuitous English was abound um, in shows. It still is. Abound in a lot of these Blue shows. Blue Dolphin! Um, I, guess, I guess if I have one complaint, it's they do the Scooby-Doo school of uh, search and research. Mm-hmm. Randomly run places and hope you find something. Well, I mean, and that, that's a long-standing tradition. Power Rangers did it, too. It's, oh, all, really? it's always in Angel Grove Park, wherever it was. It was always in, in the <laughs> park. Or at the train station, or, yes. or in the, the warehouse district. If you get a chance to watch Power Rangers Hyper Force, which is on the Hyper RPG channel here on uh, YouTube, uh, and I encourage you to do so, uh, Paul Schreier, the guy that played Bulk, mm-hmm. is one of the char- plays one of the characters on the show. And when they... The, the, that team does time travel, and they travel back to 1994 and the original Power Rangers era, and they're trying to track down a monster, and their robotic assistant, who is Alpha 55, oh, uh, goes, you know, basically, I, 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 you know, where can we ever find them? And Paul Schreier's character, who is uh, a beat cop, he, he's like literally like the cop on the street kind of character, mm-hmm. goes, well, you know, I've done my research and, you know, I've read up on this era since this is where we were headed. And, you know, 
it seems that they they always like to show up in open grassy areas with lots of sidewalks. Let's go to the park. <laughs> so <laughs> legit. I mean, I would have started at the juice bar. Put your ears to the <laughs> hear what the people see. <laughs> I think they did wind up at the juice bar. Or something I'm just saying, man. In uh, earning for life. In, in other Sentai shows like uh, Common Rider, like Common Rider Gaim, I mean, the juice shop is actually where some really illicit deals go down. Yeah, to- Tokusatsu shows the cafe and the bar, and and depending on how adult it is, cafe, juice bar, real bar. Uh, yeah, that the oogie stuff goes down in there. I mean, you can apparently win a, a game of poker with God and come back to life for a little bit. Pat Morita mm-hmm. as Arnold. Yeah. From like, ha- yeah, Happy right. Chat. Works together with Ernie. Mm-hmm. Opened up a nice little restaurant. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. You'd go there. <laughs> you would go there. Yeah, I would go there. <laughs> so, anything that, um, if, uh, I, because I, I feel that you two guys probably like to be around for more live, man. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I like oh, absolutely, yeah. So, I would, would enjoyed it a lot. What would you be looking forward to in more live, man? Well, I'd like to see, um, I'd actually like to see a point where one of the three generals just straight up, like, where, what was the name, the, the leader of Volt? Uh, uh, Professor Bias. I just want to see Bias order them to do something, and one of the three generals goes, no. I want to actually see the, the generals, like, rebel against Bias. I don't recall if that happens in the show or not off the top of my head. Uh, I've seen it all the way through. Apparently we're going to get Rangers that aren't primary colors, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, there, there's a green and black, or the other two, so, um. There's a it's a green rhino and a black bison, so um, but they show up later. Uh, the, the only the only I won't say I'll save my commentary on that for when we get there in the series. Um, so overall, I, I really dig these two episodes. I think they're fantastic. I think Live Man's a wonderful show, um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything bad that I had to say about them. Um, not really. I guess if anything was bad. It was a little rushed. I'm going but that, that might be that might be a sign of Live Man to begin with. That, Live Man does seem to go a lot faster than the others. Well, in in Tokusatsu, like in the, the history of Super Sentai, originally Super Sentai's had a the, the episode same thing was true of Common Rider had a 25 minute run time right. and you had five minutes of commercials. Um, at some point, and I don't remember the year this happens. The time slot changed. It became twenty two and eight, and it became a twenty. It became a twenty minute show with ten minutes of commercials, mm. and then it wasn't until I think the either late nineties or early two thousands that it went back to twenty five. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, and you can feel that five minutes going away because one of the things that always strikes me about the middle of Live Man, the mecha fights are uber short. Right. right. And, yeah, because I. I I get that. I mean, where they didn't they, even do the they didn't even do the combining uh, actions in the second one. He just flew in already built. Yeah, they they kind of will fast forward through some of that. I'm stuff. sorry. No, you're all right. Yeah. Um, and you know, the thing I'm not a I'm not a massive fan of the mecha fights. If I have the choice between a long grandiose mecha fight and more story, I would rather have more story. I think it depends on the story. Yeah, it does. If the story is garbage, give me more mecha. Yeah, <laughs> fair, fair enough. Fair enough. I think this would really um, benefit from being like two parters. Remember how the Batman sixty six? You'd kind of get yeah. a build up in the first one. Tune in next week. Or Same like Batman. like how uh, the common rider shows do a lot of two parters. They did, yeah. Like a yeah. lot of the a lot of the uh, a lot of the the mid two thousands and early twenty teens common rider shows did. Did two parts a lot. Wasn't Kamen Rider Drive often two part? Kamen Rider Drive was almost always a two part episode. Um, and if I remember correctly, it might be the last Kamen Rider show that was. Because ah. I know they've dropped it for some of the more recent ones. Um, but yeah, it, it might could. 88 is a really strange year in Tokusatsu history because I, I refer to 1988 as the year that was everything Tokusatsu was. Uh, like Super Sentai and Kamen Rider, this is everything it was, but everything it would become. Oh, oh yeah. Transitioning period. It, it was very much because, and you see it more in Kamen Rider Black, which is the show that um, came out in 87, 87 into 88. I haven't seen Black RX all the way through, so it may hold true for that 88 installment. Um, but that time frame, you had, it was still episodic with stories that were done in a single episode, but... It became more serialized in that they didn't forget what happened last week. Right. So, 
Uh, that's and, always a benefit. Yeah, and, and I, I enjoy that. It's almost sort of the best of both worlds. So, uh, and as far as what I'm looking forward to, more live, man, because uh, I enjoy this show. So, I think that's going to about wrap it up because you have two really good episodes, uh, which frankly were a bit of filler to a point. They were. But, um, but it was good filler. <laughs> I've always said filler is not bad if it serves a purpose, and in this case, it did. The purpose it served was to provide more insight into some of the villain characters. Mm -hmm. So it's filler with a purpose, and that's a good thing. So, <laughs> and to not sell stuffed animals. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine watching the news like a week later in Japan, and in and in uh, the economic forecast. <laughs> yeah, toy stores report a. 40% drop in the sale of stuffed animals. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, 50% jump in the sale of body armor. Um, oh, one final <laughs> thing that I liked about it. Um, the, uh, the, the Team Vault logo running shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that was fan. Yeah, it's like, evil, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, I, well, and I, I will, okay, I will backtrack. So that is one thing I thought was kind of silly. Kind of dumb. Uh, that the plot of the episode was basically speed with running shoes. Speed would didn't exist in '88, folks. But the the movie, not the drug, the drug did. But the movie didn't. Whereas, like, if she runs to the idea is that she will run so fast she will overheat and explode. I'm like, what makes this girl so damn special that Volt went after her? They didn't go after her. They went after the doll. But you get the gist of it. So, folks, I think that's going to wrap us up for this week. Uh, of course, if you want to check us out on social media, you can do that. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Periscope. All of those are at Geek Carolina. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Denzy Caster. And uh, you can check out the shows these two gentlemen frequent. Chopsaki Cinema for Josh. Yep, yep. Eight Star Anime for Dave. Uh, you can check those out. Uh, Chopsaki Cinema Wednesdays. And, uh, of course, uh, Eight Star Anime pops up on Fridays here most weeks, assuming that something hasn't gone horribly awry. Um yeah. Like, you know, me getting sick or jury duty. One of those things. Um, which my jury duty got canceled, so. <laughs> uh, or Chris so, having to work uh, his two and a half jobs. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. If the real world doesn't intervene, you'll mm -hmm. see us right Stupid on time. Stupid real world. So, uh, and if you uh, would if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like, give it a thumbs down. Just tell us why in the comments below. We'd love to hear back from you. Mm -hmm. Hit the subscribe button if you don't mind, because that helps us out a whole lot. And if you'd like to pick up some cool merch, such as the Denzy Caster shirt I'm wearing, or the hashtag Sincere Shaolin Fist, we're going to get around to Super 1 sooner or later. Mm -hmm. um, Dang right we are. <laughs> and while we do not sell Starfleet merchandise, we do sell merchandise for 8-star anime. Uh, so... If you want to see that, just watch last week's episode. Um, but uh, you can pick all of that up at our Cafe Press store, cafepress.com slash geekcarolina. So, folks, until next time, I'm Mike. I'm Josh. I'm David. Live long and prosper. We'll see you next week.